In this video, we'll write the net ionic equation for BaCl2 plus CuSO4. This is barium chloride and this is copper 2 sulfate. The first thing we need to do is write the balanced molecular equation. So this is our molecular equation up here and it looks like this equation, it's already balanced. So after we've balanced our molecular equation, we need to write the states for each of the compounds. So as we look at these, we're going to figure out whether they're going to break apart into their ions, if they'll be soluble. So chloride's very soluble, put an AQ after that. And then copper sulfate, let's look that up on a solubility table. So we could find copper on our table right here, and then the sulfate way over here. So if we follow this over and then up, we see copper sulfate, that's going to be soluble. So we're going to put an AQ. It's going to dissolve, split apart into its ions. Barium sulfate, here is our barium right here. Come over again. That is I. That means it's insoluble. It's not going to break apart into its ions. In fact, it's going to be a solid. So put a little S for a solid. So when barium chloride and copper 2 sulfate, they react, we have this precipitate here. It falls to the bottom of the test tube. It's a solid. And then chlorides, we said, very soluble. So we have our states. Next, we're going to split the strong electrolytes apart into their ions, and that's going to be the complete ionic equation. So to do that, we need to know the charges on the elements. Barium, that's in group 2 on the periodic table, 2 plus. The chloride ion, that has a 1 minus. The copper, we don't really know looking at this. We do know the sulfate, that's always 2 minus. That's one to memorize. So the copper has to be 2 plus. That's why we're calling it copper 2. Barium, 2 plus. We said 2 minus. The chloride, that has a negative charge, but we have two of them. So 2 plus has to be the ionic charge, again, on the copper there. So we've got our charges. Now we can split them up into the strong electrolytes. That's going to give us the complete ionic equation. We have Ba2 plus, and I'm not going to write aqueous after each one. We'll do that at the end. Plus, we have that Cl minus, that chloride ion. Subscript means we have two of those. We have the copper ion, the copper 2 ion, Cu2 plus, and then we have that sulfate ion, SO4, 2 minus. So these are the reactants in our net ionic equation. On the product side, for barium sulfate, that's a solid. It's at the bottom of the test tube. It's not broken apart. In net ionic equations, we don't break these solids up. So we're just going to write BASO4. That's our barium sulfate. That would be a solid. Plus, we have the copper 2 ion. And then again, we have two chloride ions, 2Cl-. So this is what we call the complete ionic equation. And now we can cross out spectator ions. They're on both sides of our complete ionic equation. So I see there's two Cl minus here, two chloride ions in the reactants, two chloride ions in the products. Let's cross those out. Copper two plus here, copper two plus here. Cross them out. But everything else, that's unique. And that gives us our net ionic equation. So let me clean this up and add the states in, and we'll have a nicely written net ionic equation for BaCl2 plus CuSO4. So this is the net ionic equation for BaCl2 plus CuSO4. We have our barium ion plus our sulfate ion. That gives us our barium sulfate, which is a solid. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.